I was in a yard that was like at least 40% guys in there for murder. Oh, jeez. And I was in there for magic mushrooms and acid. That, fuck, that is insane. Yeah. But Did you have Drew as your lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome along to the Community Notice Board. Alright, you ready, Drewy? Yeah, count us in. Alright, hello, welcome to another episode of Community Notice Board, a podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes, and coming of age tales. We've got a very special guest today, very funny comedian, Andrew Hamilton is here. How hello. are you, mates? Hey, hey. Good and, to be here, guys. Yeah, uh, it's great to have you. And this is a, this is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a hot one. Because usually when we do research for places, we spend ages Googling places, you know. I don't know about in. ages. Mine's <laughs> normally 20 minutes we, before the episode we, we starts. We spend five to 45 minutes Googling places, <laughs> run out of inspiration, Google suburb name funny stories, hope we can do that, then rely on riffs, and then we're truly dead in the water. But you are probably one of the only people when we Google your name, something comes up other than Fringe Show or Little Listen To Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a fair few stories on the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> oh, two, uh, two great rags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bastions of journalism, those two. <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, the stuff on the New York Times is a bit more... <laughs> <laughs> incredible. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite headline was in the Daily Telegraph recently, which said... Um, Criminal turned comedian gets high on laughs. Oh, wow. that was, hey, okay. pretty good. That's a positive one. I like yeah, that. We normally have comedian turned criminal uh, <laughs> <laughs> playing futsal soccer with us. Um, yeah, so let's do the. Let's get into it then, Hamo. So you, you, you've spent some time in the clink, right? Like yep. that's that's what we're talking about here. So should we go into the background of of what was going on? Well, I, yeah, I think Jamie wants to start. Yeah, so a, far back at the start that it's yeah, irrelevant yeah, yeah. to Well, not really back at the start, but I guess, like, I, I mean, I've only just met you, but I do yep. have a bone to pick with you. On, <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. On behalf of my wife, because while <laughs> I was researching you, uh, I found out that you were the owner and founder of Brooklyn Crispy, a pizza place in Potts Point. That's right. And it was my and my wife's favorite pizza place because specifically it did pizza for dogs. You'd been there? Yeah, yeah. We went there a bunch of times. <laughs> Amazing. And then... <laughs> We used and then to, he got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I would always order the pizza for dogs. It was, had all the I mean, raw kangaroo meat I could eat. I on mean, it. we didn't excuse to keep coming here. What about a dog? But yeah, we had my little puppy, and then whenever he had a birthday or we had people over, we'd go to Brooklyn Crispy and get the dog pizza. And then recently, we tried to get it, and it had shut down. And my wife was like. Brooklyn Pizza is fucking gone. Like, uh, Brooklyn Crispy, sorry, is gone. I was about to go there and I realized it had been wiped off the Google. It said permanently closed. And then as I was doing research for this episode, it came up Brooklyn Crispy and I told my wife and she was like, tell him I'm very upset with him. <laughs> <laughs> What's your wife's name? Amy. Send him, Amy my apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, we got way more media coverage for the dog pizza thing than anything else. <laughs> yeah, and that was right. just like a stupid off-the-cuff idea I had because... Um, we were opening it up in Potts Point and all the gays of Potts Point have dogs instead of kids. Okay. And so I thought, and I had two dogs at the time and my fiance at the time was um, constantly buying them puppuccinos, which is like cappuccinos yeah, for yeah, dogs. So yeah. I thought, well, what can we do for dogs? And so I came up with the idea of doing these nutritionally ap approved snacking pizzas okay. for dogs. I was about to ask what makes a dog for pizza besides the fact that you put it on the floor. <laughs> well, it came it came in like mini boxes and they just uh, – you couldn't have things like onion or leek and there's a bunch of other stuff yep, like okay. chocolate that yeah, you can't no have chocolate, on there. Chocolate pizza. Damn, but, no. chocolate chocolate pizza. Jamie's <laughs> tail's wagging. Up. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate pizza. I'll sit for one. <laughs> so, we had, so we had like three different types of dog pizzas and we had – People coming for a lot of dogs' birthdays. That seemed to be yeah. a thing. We also had bone broth, which was like um, um, we called puppy vino, and that was just <laughs> made I from like this. the off cuts of meat. And mm. so we had that in uh, in dog bowls along with the dog pizzas, and that seemed to just blow blow up. That got us all the media coverage we needed. But every time I tell a journalist, you know, we've got great human pizzas as well, they'd be like, "Yeah, that's great, but tell us more about the dog." <laughs> <laughs> I would say we did very much enjoy the human pizza portion as well. But awesome, you fucked us, Hamo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. further media thought. coverage didn't even mention the pizzas. I assume they were just going mentioning a lot of the drugs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the original. To address the elephant in the room, I so th there's drugs. Were there drugs? Yeah, were there drugs involved at the time? Not, there weren't drugs involved with the restaurant in any way. Right. Um, but there was, when I got arrested, there was an article in the Daily Mail 
and they they lent on the, obviously the pizza angle. It said from pizza man to party drug king. Hey, that's all right. And all I thought right. that's... Honestly, that sounds like an upgrade. These yeah. guys are coming up with a lot of good headlines for you. <laughs> yeah. mm. These are good fringe show titles, too. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's giving it to him on a plate, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> you really are a human headline. I mean, man. they must have just... They must have got the tip off from the King's Cross police because I'd already been in jail for a few weeks when that story came out in the Daily Mail and they must have been like private schoolboy pizza shop that sold dog pizzas, party drugs. Like, this story writes itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 just an ending... Podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so what? So what's the? Yeah, should, should we? Get I mean, into yeah, the, I'm so curious about the the stories of inside. Like, so you said just off mic earlier, you went two prisons. Yes. So I was in remand, which is like prison when you're unsentenced. So uh-huh. I was arrested on the fourth of June last year, and oh, so that's like mid lockdown. It was just before the lockdown started, and then I got out just before the lockdown ended. So basically, I did my lockdown just a, bit, a much more extreme version than everyone else, right? Yeah. But, but here's the weird thing: people on the uh, outside that were in lockdown couldn't associate with anyone else, but in jail, like a Parkley prison, I was playing touch footy with guys. Oh man! Of prison. You're living it up. So it was all the times to go locked up, man. <laughs> yeah, you fucking you nailed it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So who would have thought you'd be more social in jail yeah. Yeah, than you could be on the outside? Next time, uh, Perrottet's like, we're considering a lockdown. I'm like, I'm going to rob a seven. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a bunch of Facebook pages if they found out about that during lockdown, like, they've got more freedom in jail. Like, <laughs> yeah. They would have gone off on one. <laughs> and that fucking was true. So... I mean, I'm interested in the how you got sprung, or, or you don't have to get into the details. But like, you know, what, what was it? Was it just a spiral? Were you sort of like begging to be caught by the end? Right. Uh, I mean, so what happened was my uh, ex fiance, um, she had had like we had been, been partying for a few days, and she'd hadn't slept, and she'd had I think too much cocaine, and I wasn't home, and she ran off and thought that the mafia were trying to kill her or something, oh, no. and she ran off and. Um, she got picked up by the police with a bunch of my cash on her and um, she just told them that I was a drug dealer and so they raided the house and arrested me. Damn. Damn. So she, said, she said, officer, from pizza boy to party king, <laughs> drug king. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it went down. And uh, so I'm, I'm interested in the quality of the touch footy in, inside. <laughs> 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 so I, I, I bet it's good. <laughs> I thought you were going to say quality of the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. I don't know. It's like, are we talking Oz tag now, here? Are you guys doing chip and chases are okay? <laughs> uh, just grubbers? <laughs> <laughs> All of it. There's a lot of... Drew was the worst interviewer in the world. <laughs> 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 trying to tell this story. He's like, oh, I don't know touch footy again. Can we jump? Jump ahead to that. <laughs> well, um, I mean, there's a lot of Koori boys in jail uh, that are real. In another life, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 could have been first grade rugby league totally, players. Yeah. You know, totally. just private you just, school white boys aren't really holding up. No, nah. <laughs> and I was fat then because like I was like 30 kilos heavier than I am now. Okay. Like I was fat and unhealthy and pale white, and so I started getting fit in jail. But there's a lot of guys in there that are just like. Absolute rigs, like yeah, just yeah. Very, wait. So very you can fit. get fit in jail too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sign me up. I was gonna say you you avoided our lockdown. You got to play touch footy and you got ripped and lost it. Like you had the greatest four months of anybody's life. I think. I think it also very much depends on your charges. Like I was a novelty in there because I was in there for magic mushrooms and acid, uh-huh. right? But uh, I think if you're <laughs> in prison for Diddling kids or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For rape, uh, snitching, um, pedophilia, beating up the elderly, any of those kind of things. Yeah. So you're going to have a much, much worse right. time. Right. If you get arrested for snitching, that sucks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the cops are like, we're sending you away for well, snitching. You're like, can I get a fucking win here, dude? Which is probably the thing Drew would get arrested <laughs> yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. Just go into an undercover cop and be like, did you see he was wearing that? And they're like, that's not really, but we'll take him. You know, I actually had the narcotics police come and see me after. After I got released when I was on bail at my parents' place, um, the narcotics police came to see me if I wanted to snitch for like a deal. Yeah. And I was like, but I'm, I'm already out of jail. I may not, I, I'm probably not going, I may not go back. Like what's... Yeah, what are you giving you a get out of jail free? Or they just like, yeah, we, we, we stuffed up the meeting. We should have come and seen you oh, three yeah. weeks well, ago. Or so. I said to them, like, you're supposed to do this at the start, at the start <laughs> like <laughs> when someone's being taken to prison, yeah, yeah. not Guess when they're out. Like, ah, yeah, sorry, and mate. It was a Google Calendar stuff <laughs> up. <laughs> even better, they said they couldn't get in because of COVID. The prison was in lockdown, right? So oh, it, oh, that, even, that even screwed up the New South Wales snitch program. That's so, right? oh, so, that's so funny. <laughs> it's God, yeah. it's one of the, forgo- the forgotten casualties. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, right? the sn- yeah. <laughs> 
were, were, were they um, snitches. was it were they trying to get you to snitch on people inside that you may have chatted to and may have spilled some info? Do you know, or do they not even really get into it? No, it was more just they they wanted any information on um, guys that I used to be in the same circle, right? Or right, right, yeah, right, whatever. You know, right. So and obviously, once COVID kills the snitch industry. It, you know, follow on effect with the stitch industry. It's <laughs> Wait, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, yeah, okay. Come on, yeah. Come on. Thank, you. Thank you, Hammer. Just get stitched. Thank you. Thank you. First Clarky, now Hammer. The guest is the only one on my side sometimes. <laughs> oh, this day. We're going to have to have a mate. fucking team meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you t- um, you're unappreciated, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there Thank, you. Thank you. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, it, that... It must have been like you had no idea what prison was like. Like you, that was the first time you ever been in trouble in that sort of sense at all. Yeah, absolutely. And like the worst part was the first two weeks when you get there, you put into quarantine because of because of COVID at the time. Everyone gets put in quarantine. So for the first two weeks, I um, the first four days you're not even allowed out of your cell at all. And I had no books, no TV, nothing. Um, so you're just stuck in your own head, and Oof. it's right after you've just been arrested. So yeah, yeah, yeah not the best time. <laughs> Your head is just full of the worst. And thoughts. you're probably coming down off a bit of a coke pan. I was. Anyway. Yeah, I <laughs> yes. was. So like, luckily from that, I hadn't slept in a few days, so I just tried to sleep as much as possible just to not be thinking mm. because mm. it was a dark place. But then after about 10 days, I got a television. Oh, and after about five days, I'd, I'd gotten at least a pencil and pieces of paper. So I started doing food reviews of all my prison meals just <laughs> – for something to <laughs> to do, so you, you it's a lot of the same dog meat pizza here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. The bone so, broth was yeah, delicious. Yeah. So you weren't even like you know, it's not like you were doing comedy. Then you went in and then you thought, oh, how can I make this funny? You were just like, to keep yourself sane, I'm going to write pizza, well, uh, not pizza, uh, reviews, food, food reviews, reviews of all my prison meals and like complain about you know prison food needing salt or you know <laughs> just really minor things. What was some of the meals? I got it. Yeah, I got it here. Right. What's the best? Well, you've one? been documenting in these on on yep. Instagram. Yeah, so, so I mean, some of the worst ones were like a um, fish lentil curry that Ooh. I had. Um, mm, doesn't that was good. pretty bad. Um, vegetarian frittatas were always pretty bad. They were just flavorless. But um, once I got out of quarantine and I was in prison wings because you got cold meals twice a week where they were served cold, but. When you were in the regular prison wings and you could move in and out of your cells, they had um, these conveyor toasters, and so you could heat up your food, so you could really pimp things up. So, oh, okay. you okay. know, you could heat up the chicken wings that yeah, you got. Yeah. Or Are they um, like when you go to a buffet breakfast, like the to- you know, you put your bread in and it's One of those, slowly, yeah. yeah. But in the weird. first wing I was in, um, the heating elements were busted, so you had to put it in like seven <laughs> times just to heat it up. <laughs> but um, then when I went to Long Bay Jail, I, got a, I was given a sandwich press, Oh, and um, Did you win a prize? Well, I just... It's <laughs> the meat raffle. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> in, in Park Lee, you're allowed to buy them, but at Long Bay, you're not because a guy got murdered with one about... <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, what a way to go. <laughs> about two years ago, you look it up, it, this guy got hit over the head with a sandwich press in a pillowcase, oh, right, like God. 15 times. And then when they asked the guy, like, why'd you kill him? He just said, oh, he had to be gotten rid of. Like, that was the answer. <laughs> Oh okay. right? oh and that's why you can't have nice things yeah. at Long Bay Jail. So, so you could only have them if someone um, handed one down to you because they were just like floating around the right. prison wing. And it turned out there was a bloke in the yard that recognised me from um, the Columbian in Darlinghurst randomly. I used to like shout people beers whenever I was like winning on the pokies. That used to, oh. man, so, that used to be my pre – there used to be a gig, the uh, Comedy Lounge – and the Colombian is so super close. That was yep. always my pre, go, like, go have a couple of skewies by yourself before the gig. Yeah. Colombian yeah. was the place I the went lounge. when on the way to lounge I needed to shit, but I <laughs> didn't have the confidence to shit in lounge. Because <laughs> if you ever went to the comedy lounge, a hundred people, and then this toilet that does not lock. Yeah, it was for scary. The men's right off the And the bathrooms at the Colombian are all right. The bathrooms at the Colombian are better than being yeah. like, They're hey, the ones I, upstairs, I'm, a, I'm right? the MC yeah. tonight. You might have just heard and saw me shitting <laughs> from... <laughs> So you're in uh, the pokey so lounge you're getting at the Columbian. You're, just you're walking around the prison yard getting recognised from the Columbian. I love that. So then I, that guy hooked me up with a sandwich press and uh, and a kettle. And so then once you have a sandwich press, you can make much, much better meals. Yeah, so you can. Mm. Like, um, you get like, sometimes you get like a cold beef p- patty and you can put it on bread and turn it like with a bit of cheese into a cheeseburger, yeah, makeshift yeah. prison cheeseburger. Yeah. Um, you can even get like the prison metal trays, right? And you can buy on your weekly 
grocery, buy up like a carbonara pasta, put some milk and water in this tray and put close the – it's like almost like a hot plate. Yeah. Right? Oh, right. Okay. And yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. It's just you can cook up a carbonara pasta on these things. So <laughs> that they are worth their weight in gold. <laughs> and were you like – were you just – this is for your own benefit eating it or were you helping other people sh- cooking up or you handing food around? That, or? that was just for me, but I did um, chip in with a bunch of other guys – every couple of days and so you'd put in like fried rice or um, a can of spam or um, some cans of vegetables and there was a hot plate out in the prison yard mm. and so one guy would cook it up for like five people and then we'd divvy it all up and take it back to ourselves right. so it was a bit of a kind of a cu- yeah. communal cook up yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask about the sandwich press and the kettle when you say you got them did that mean it was in your cell like in my cell fuck yep. that's alright and so but you were you sharing the cell with someone else or yep yep so yeah, when you got it, the guy's like, "Fuck, this guy's my meal ticket now." He That's right. Rules. That's right. And I so. assume in prison you don't want to be known for serving food to dogs either, because like, oh, this <laughs> fucking dog gets <laughs> all his food off Hamo. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. It's, you, obviously, if you've got a cellmate who doesn't have that stuff and you do, they're going to be very happy. So but, how how do you get it? Like, what what's the process there to get be like? Oh, I'm the sandwich press guy, and the other guy's like, "Fuck, I've been waiting for the Breville for years. <laughs> it's not coming." <laughs> Well, at Parkley, uh, you can buy those things, and yep. then within a month they arrive. But and, uh, and, and you buy them, you got to get your family to pay pay the money over the thing. That's right. Whatever. So your loved ones can put in up to six hundred bucks a month into your prison account, and that can go. You can put that onto your telephone account or um, your grocery account. You can spend up to a hundred bucks a week on like food groceries, like okay. um, cups of noodles and cans of soft drink and chocolates and um, spam and uh, egg powder and all kinds of things like that. But then there's also a thing once a month called the activity buy-up. And on that, you can buy things like sneakers and trackies and jumpers, mm. as well as a kettle and a sandwich press. But obviously, as I said, the, the sandwich press is not an item that you can buy at, at Long Bay. You have to Tem- temporarily unavailable. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'd like set a pillowcase, a, set of steak knives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a pillowcase, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It still surprises me that the kettles are, are allowed to be in there because like I, I did, I never saw it, but I did hear kind of horror stories of guys. Well, they're pretty big. Having dramas and then like oh, throwing throw oil, water, oil yeah, water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that too, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you're just looking at a kettle, being like, "God, you're tall." <laughs> <laughs> fuck that! Oh, yeah, fuck. Or that. even putting like boiling water and putting jam in it and throwing that, and then the jam sticks to them. Like, oh my like, lord! Like, that's like napalm. fucking medieval, man. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. So you didn't see? So did you sort of keep out of harm's way when you're in? there because it was this minimum security or the very in, least i was in maximum security you're in maximum yeah like, at long bay jail smoke. i was in a yard that was like at least 40 percent guys in there for murder oh jeez and i was in there for magic mushrooms and acid <laughs> Fuck, that is insane yeah but did you have drew was your lawyer <laughs> 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 just yeah. interrupting a deposition to be like how tall is this <laughs> 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 um, that's crazy. I didn't think that. Is that because oh, it was they just treat dealers as, as violent dealers, sort of thing? Yeah, but it's, it's based on the severity of your charges. So, because I was in there on two commercial drug supply charges, um, it doesn't matter, you know, whether they're magic mushrooms or heroin or cocaine, it was, it's all treated, the same. It was treated the same. So, mm, before that it, that's got to change. I mean, before you get sentenced, then once you get sentenced, I would have been, if I had gone back to jail, I would have been in minimum security because it was a non-violent crime. But um, before that, in remand, I was considered oh, I see. a top yes. classification. Right, okay. okay. So that so you're in remand at Park Lee, did you say? And, and Long Bay. So I was in remand at both. Then I got eventually granted bail to my parents' house and then I was under house arrest there for about four months. And then I had my bail conditions changed so that I could work and do comedy. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And so it would have been the first time that in history that a, like application form came on someone's desk. I right? think I think it, the, the judges allowed it p- partly out of intrigue. Yeah, <laughs> it says here he wants to do crown comedy on the first <laughs> day. They're, they're just like, and so we are going to be watching you very closely. And by that, I mean we are going to watch your raw comedy <laughs> game next year. We, See what yeah. kind of five you can come up with, or otherwise you're going to get five to seven. We do respect the jurisdiction of the comedy court here, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> which you will be performing in front of. So uh, I, would you believe I had to go specifically to court to get my conditions changed again for raw? Um, because <laughs> oh, That's the funniest thing. <laughs> because because I, was, I had to be home by 10 p.m. 
uh, uh, when the rules changed, yeah. but then we had it changed for Raw that I was allowed to be out after 10 as long as I was in the company of my mum or dad. Oh, um, But shit. I had to go to court. It cost thousands of dollars to um, go to, 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 go to court to get permission just for Raw. And how'd you oh. do a Raw? Well, I got to the state final. And that's, oh, hey, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's pretty good. There you go. Because that would have sucked if you just went up there and fucking <laughs> pants <laughs> fell down, <laughs> the whole <Michael> comes out, <laughs> just scooped off stage. Sorry, mum and dad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Steph, um, Steph Broadbridge kept telling me, like, I had to mention that on stage that I had had my conditions changed in court just for Raw, but <laughs> I just didn't have time to fit it in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're pretty brutal with the light at Raw. But oh, absolutely. Probably not as brutal as. Prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flashing lights outside when your fucking ankle bracelet goes off. That's, that's insane. That's incredible. So, but does that mean when you did well at Raw, did you go back to the court and be like, oh, fuck your state finalist cunt? <laughs> when you, if you had made it to, because that's a New South Wales jurisdiction stuff, you wouldn't have been able to go down without changing it again? So, very good question. So, <laughs> I, we realised that there was a loophole in it because the, I had to report to the police station every day. Right? How good's a loophole? But, um, <laughs> but I also was allowed out after 10 30 or 10 p.m. as long as I was in the company of my parents. So I could be in Sydney, fly to Melbourne with them, be in Melbourne overnight as long as I'm in the company of my parents. Right. No breaking of no breaking okay. of it, and then flown back. So, so there was no le- don't leave the state. It was just I, that yeah. day, day I, sort I of wasn't thing. allowed within a kilometre of an international departure point, but. Um, I think the distance between the domestic terminal and the international oh, is right, like one point one kilometers. Yeah, tape measure. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, that's did, crazy. We did look yep. into that, but anyway, <laughs> man. So. And we're like, yeah, hey, you're not allowed to go on holiday unless it's wholesome. <laughs> you better bring those folks along. <laughs> the idea to me that's so funny now is like spending thousands of dollars through the court to make sure you're available for um, till past ten thirty p.m. because they'll be more lenient than just asking the store if you can go on in the first bracket. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, can I go on like before? Eight? And they're like, no, nah, can't. This is we've got thirty other open mics. Yeah, here. we've heard that one before. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on bail. Oh, yeah, you're going you to go. To, you're going to go back to Long Bay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, I mean, it has been really handy for open mics that I've gone to to be able to say, "Oh, can I go out of the first half?" <laughs> yeah. Because I have, to get home, I have to be home by ten. Fuck but it, now, yeah. now that I've been sentenced and I don't have a curfew anymore. I feel like I have to make up for that, so I'm always like stay to the end. And, yeah, uh, geez, they, that's almost a you know punishment worse than prison. Yeah, well, yeah. I've been ordered to do 200 hours community service, and I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I mean, I've done a couple of 200 hours of community service <laughs> nights. <laughs> right, fucking yeah. open yeah. Sitting, yeah. At, sitting at Listen the back, listening to the summer. Been out a few minutes. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. Sitting yeah. at the back of Magic Mike, shoving a Breville in a bag, just being like, oh, I've had Jack of this. <laughs> some, of the, some of those old modern kettle hangs, and you're stuck with the wrong table. That felt like. 200 hours man. oh my so, lord that's um that's so funny so so and just um why did you switch between the two prisons what, what was there just so um it's i think it's called like random bed placement like um park lee is a tr- is a considered a transit prison so that's where when guys originally get sent from local police lockup to prison because they get their bail refused and they're in remand they'll get sent to uh, usually either silver water or Parkley to start, and then once they get their uh, their classification, they can be sent to any other remand jail, depending on um, the, whether it has to be minimum, medium, medium, or maximum security. Okay. So I was at Parkley. It's like a little travel hub. Mm. Exactly right. So it's a transit jail, and then I got moved. I I thought that I was going to get a work hold. I I I'd got a, had a job at Parkley, and I thought I was going to stay there and be able to work it because I was a good worker. And one of the, I keep trying to say screws, I mean, prison guards <laughs> <laughs> had you told me, the <laughs> one of the dirty screws, he uh, <laughs> had told me that he tried to get me a work hold, but had been denied. And um, so I, I got I got moved um, just randomly to, to Long Bay. And it sucked. The feeling absolutely sucked because you spent all this time getting to know a bunch of inmates mm, yeah. and you get into a rhythm of jail. You get into a rhythm of, you know, the schedule. Yep. And you make your peace with it. And so you wouldn't have had any idea what you're getting in for in the, at first. And then you're finally getting used to it. And the moment you're sort of in the rhythm, then it's not like you've been jail hopping forever. Like you don't know what this other prison's going to yeah, be like. Exactly actually, right. right. So you've got to start from square one all over again. And I'd heard like bad stories about Long Bay. So I was just like, fuck, like, what am I um, walking into? And then it turned out I had a better time there than I did at Park Lane. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, really? was, it was way better. But really? um, in what way? Well, 
ocean views. <laughs> it was just a, a good <laughs> good gang of criminals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, right. hey, you could say good hang. hang. Yeah, like, that's a, fun. It was a good hang. I had some guys I got along with. I just would walk the yard and train all day and lay in the sun and sunbake and yeah. just um, Perfect. just share stories, cool really. Wow. Um, yeah. We ha- how early in there are you doing bits to the other prisoners? Like, you know, you're thinking, oh, fuck, this is going to crush, <laughs> crush in the yard tomorrow. <laughs> to be honest, I, I didn't – I wasn't that um, kind of – much of a loud mouth or, yep. or big personality in jail just because I didn't want to draw too much attention to myself. Understandable. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I had the guys that I got along with and I joke with them, but I wasn't trying to really draw too much attention to myself. I mean, there were guys. You went flyering the yard. <laughs> you want to go yeah. see? <laughs> <laughs> see my fringe yeah, show it's, tomorrow it's night? It's yeah. yeah. It's crouching down behind some big criminal, like, come push him over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think, like, a an open mic in prison would go really well because there's just a lot of funny people that yeah, are. Yeah, oh, I reckon. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah, Me absolutely. and uh, former guest Luke Heggie have been talking about this for years, doing, like, the Johnny Cash, but a mm. comedy gig in prison. Yeah. Oh. And just seeing if you have it. Yeah. Uh, just to. Nate Bargatze has a great bit about doing comedy in prison and like how fucking terrifying it is because he was saying the whole. I don't want to blow the spot up, but the whole bit just is do the whole the, bit. The, the toilet is right behind the stage, and it just he's just. I think about, I've seen. He would have seen it. Mm-hmm. He's like, and he and he's saying he's trying to do his bits, but he just keeps pointing at the guy like, should he be walk? Should he be walking up like that? <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, right. Pisses directly behind him. Oh. Like, I've never been that confident in my life. Oh. I mean, to be oh. fair, Lucasio ran a room at Phoenix Comedy in Willara where the toilet was exactly behind you as well. And really? So many old eastern suburbs women a bit just like walk straight past you and you're just like, oh, you're going to the no, bathroom? I don't think he was worried that anyone's going to shank them though. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, from behind. No, yeah. I was just worried that I'd lost my attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I, man, I agree. I think... We- we should set that up. Comedy tour. <laughs> what if we, what if we do a what up? if we do a live? I'm just gonna email info at Long Bay. It's info me, at Long Bay at Aussiemail.com. <laughs> Give me another year, boys, and I'll gonna do it as the, the When guy. I said yeah, we, yeah. I was looking at Okay. Oh fuck it. Someone's trying to start a spin off podcast. It's got Andrew Squared, baby. So so I have like this growing fo- following on TikTok uh, from doing my prison food reviews. Yep. Um, my main audience seems to be like middle-aged divorcees, um, <laughs> oh, uh, okay. bikies, yep. and lots of prison officers, right? Um, okay, screw it. So, yes. So <laughs> uh, a bunch of them, four um, prison officer, female prison officers came to see me at a gig in Cronulla like two weeks ago. Oh, oh that's sick. Right? Really? Mm. Yeah, because they had seen all my stuff on social media and thought it was funny because they can relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so they came to see me. And then they ended up getting so pissed they wouldn't shut the hell up the whole gig. <laughs> Classic so, Cronulla crowd. And so Christian Elderfield had to tell them to shut the fuck up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did he know they were prison officers? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. knew. Yeah, 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 he was saying, you guys should, are supposed to know the rules and stick to them, you know. <laughs> right, right. But um, so, you know, who but knows? How would know, you go with the gig? Um. Yeah, I did fine. I was um, coming off recovering from COVID and I had like uh, like a lingering brain fog. So okay. have you guys had that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a little so, bit. Yeah. Around. But um, it, went, it went really well, actually. It was a lot of fun. That's Hell great. Yeah. And, so, and so you went in without doing comedy and then you started writing the, the food reviews and that was getting a bit of track. And then you started thinking, hey, this is I enjoy this. Or is it something you'd want to do comedy for a long time? Like what, what was the sort of spark? I don't think the food reviews was re- necessarily connected to doing anything comedy wise it was just something i was doing to keep myself sane mm-hmm. but when i was sitting in there particularly when i just had nothing else to do and i was stuck in my own horrifying thoughts i thought um i thought it can only get worse <laughs> I, should, I should start doing open my comedy I, thought, I, thought I can't get much lower than this. <laughs> but i felt i felt like my life was over and yeah. so i thought well what do i regret not doing with my life and weirdly, the number one answer was stand-up comedy. <laughs> number two was cat pizzas. <laughs> 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 Have you been reading my marketing plan? <laughs> <laughs> that was on there. <laughs> that was really, uh, so, so, so yeah, yeah. So I, then I you just went, "This is the time to do it." Look, I've got to got to restart my life. I guess right. You know, that's right. I promised myself that I would do it, and then as soon as I got out, I saw on on social media like an uh, ad for Raw. So I signed up for that, and I thought, "Well, all right, out if I'm going to do." Raw, I should start um, going to some open mics just mm-hmm. to get some experience up. And the first, like, five minutes I wrote was, like, 
I think I'd been thinking about it for so long. I found it very easy to write that first five minutes because I just wrote about well, it's probably who, who I was after jail. Totally, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, it came to you can I ask quick, what yeah. what your first open mic was? Crown comedy. It was Crown oh, comedy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have loved it. The classic. Yeah, you would have fucking crushed and, there. For and me, I went really. with my. I had to go with my mum because it was before I was allowed. Um, <laughs> before I, when I had the house arrest, I could only leave the house. So they had an audience company. of one that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> from downtown, and, and they were super supportive, and it, it went really well. And that, um, that gave me the yeah the first taste. That's of sick. It. Awesome, yeah. and you never looked back then. Did you have the ankle bracelet on, or is I, I didn't have to have an ankle bracelet. Uh, fortunately, mm-hmm. I just the rule was I had an anklet, but that was just my. <laughs> 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 the rule was I could only leave the house if I was in the company of my parents. Yeah, but there was no way to yeah that there's an honor system, or if you're caught somewhere, I guess. Well, you don't want to get caught. Sure. No, right? exactly. Yeah. I'm just yeah, that, but that's there's enough incentive in yeah. there. Mm-hmm. To and and so it's funny. My parents said to me, Andrew, if you ever want to go out somewhere, uh, we we can go. Like you don't have to feel like you're just stuck in the house. And I said, well, it's funny you say that. Um, I've lined up a Tinder date. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Really? And so... Um, <laughs> oh, God. My parents are in their mid-70s, and so... <laughs> I, oh, man. I had said to this girl, I said, look, we can go out, but here's, here's the thing. <laughs> I um, <laughs> just got out of jail, and I'm under house arrest. Like I, I can only come on the date to the pub if my parents come along. So and you drop both those things on her, yeah. the prison and the mum's yeah. coming. <laughs> Wow. And yeah, but before then, she was probably like, well, Beats Open, my comedian. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, at least he's honest, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I assume, you know, you, part of the rule is you, your mum doesn't have to sit with you the whole night. That's she, right. She so they sat, at the en- they sat at the other end of the pub. Yeah. But then. Um, <laughs> you got food on your face. She comes over there. <laughs> 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 oh, no. my, my, my dad left early because he'd hurt his back that day. So I'm on this date with this girl, and my mum is awkwardly sitting in the corner of the pub just on her phone, like. Like a massive loner. So I oh. said to the girl, look, can we uh, go sit with my mum? Oh, oh, that that's, 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 that's a smooth that's move. Sweet, move man. Smooth move, but backfired because then my mum started like having much funnier stories than me. <laughs> <laughs> cutting my grass, you know. Cut to you and your dad just furious on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> like, mum, shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah. Your parents so, sound very sweet. Is, yeah. They very, I mean, obviously probably disappointed, but it sounds like pretty supportive of everything. I mean, yeah, obviously they're disappointed about me going in prison, you're right. But that, I think it. I didn't expect them to be so supportive of the whole comedy thing as they have. Mm. And I also didn't expect them to be so supportive of the content of my comedy because I like, was instantly making fun of like... Yeah, you're prison like, and the Raptor squad that were the guy, the organised crime squad that raided my house and, oh, right. um, you know, tackled me and said to me, this guy in full kind of combat Rap- outfit. Just R- a raptor suit, like yeah. a Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> with like a f- massive shield. He's like tackled me to the fuck. ground. They like pin me to the ground and they said, stay down, you fat cunt. You've got a tiny cock. Which is dick even else. Yeah. Like, they can just many, say this to people. <laughs> Who told you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that was one of my jokes, right? <laughs> was it? Uh, that, uh, how, that. Did, how did they know? They must have had me under surveillance for a while. <laughs> <laughs> They assigned like him to the it. micro I, squad. I mean, yeah. If so, I'm still running a room, I'm booking this guy. Who loves a small dick joke? Yeah. I'm getting back into the room running game to book this guy. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, what a psycho. I mean, because they, they knew that you were... I mean, they, I mean, I didn't know, but I feel like they they clearly you clearly would couldn't have been like a violent. It was just a drug they, deal thing. They so must the be so used to, to like going into houses with guys that must have loads of weapons yeah. that even though they you're right, they probably knew that I was just some like fat, coked up, mushy <laughs> guy. Um, they thought, fuck, you know, this is this is how we have fun. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's yeah. so hurtful, though. Like, <laughs> just to be like, oh, come on. Like, you're arresting me. you got a shield on my neck. Why do you have to say I have a small dick? Like, <laughs> Drew pointed out I had a bald spot the other day, and I haven't talked to him for three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the like first time I pretended to be friends with him since. <laughs> I did tell the detective once the Raptor score cleared out, I did tell him, I go, but just by the way, your uh, Raptor score guys, they bullied me. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I like, mean, yeah. Care less there's a reason people say A cab. You know, there's a lot of dickheads yeah, joining yeah, the police yeah. force. You know <laughs> what I mean? Go on like court, be like, actually, I'd like to settle something for the record. My penis is not small. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple people have said it's just fine. <laughs> to draw the jury's attention to exhibit A. Yeah. <laughs> this this is a, that a is a normal penis. This is a five inch measuring <laughs> tape. <laughs> hey, it's funny that, that that was not listed in the police fact sheet. But, <laughs> but it did Good say. Thought. It did say that they tried to ring the doorbell and then when no one answered, 15 minutes later, they started like smashing in the the door with a battering ram. Are you like, renting at this point? I was renting. So what, how does that work? You got to like pay the door, I guess. And then <laughs> like, does your rent just end? Yeah. I'm interested I'm, in the my, administration. My fiance, my fiance was told that she had two weeks to vacate the property. Right. Yeah. I think they just take the bond and... Um, yeah, I think yeah, those doors are off the hinges when we <laughs> rent it. <laughs> 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 uh, so, but the, yeah, they said in the re- in the <laughs> police report that they had tried to ring the doorbell, then waited 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Which, I mean, my version is they just started smashing through the door. Yeah, of, yeah, course. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They're not going, oh, he's not home. What, yeah. Are we, yeah. what do we do? And what, were you, what were you doing when they burst in? I uh, was about... Three what, three days into a bender, and I'd been doing a lot of coke, and I was watching Guy Ritchie's new movie, uh, Son of Man. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Follow up question: want to see that. How is it? <laughs> well, I only got to see halfway through. I was only halfway through the movie. You haven't seen the rest? <laughs> no. <And> then, <laughs> you didn't ask through when you got the TV in prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like nine jam and nine go and seven mate. They haven't. They're not up to no uh, streamers. Uh, that. Uh, yeah, you're not watching but HBO in prison. They did. They, they had Shawshank on like every two weeks on one of the channels. Like, <laughs> that's, that's a great. That's, that's a great bullying. movie to watch. Yeah, in, in exactly. prison. <laughs> that's that's a, like, yeah, that's. Inspirational. <laughs> Started clawing at the walls. Like, <laughs> heavy yeah, yeah, yeah. Can walls. I get a Rita Way- Hayworth poster? <laughs> Uh, I guess man. we're all going to have to watch the Guy Ritchie movie, Son of Man, now to figure out. Man, the last one I've seen of that guy. I saw was the Gentleman, the one yeah, with uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Well, Return I can talk form. to you about the first half of Son of Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you know. do a review. <laughs> yeah. And then I. I they started smashing through the door and I panicked and I grabbed a bunch of drugs and ran upstairs and started flashing them down the toilet. Oh. Yeah, oh, and that's, um, that's like out of a movie. And then yeah. uh, when I heard them breach and they were coming up the stairs, I ran and hid behind the bedroom door because I'm like, they're not going to look here. <laughs> 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 Playing hide and seek as a five year old, <laughs> just, just flapping yourself as well, being like, they're certainly not going to say I have a small penis. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, just rub it. Just rub it. Half a chump <laughs> before this guy. You got to impress the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they found me very quickly and then oh uh, god that is oh man that's not what do you do hey yeah that's so what what was the best meal you ever had in prison you said the worst but what's it what's is was there anything that leapt out that was better than the rest non-sandwich press division like i'm talking straight from the kitchen at long bay we had a barbecue one one day which was pretty great it had like uh, steak sausage it was when we were in a there was another covid outbreak and so we were locked up for like 10 days and I think they they knew that we were all going to lose our minds in there. So they put on a barbecue just to try and placate us a bit. Yeah, yeah. But it had uh, chicken kebabs. Oh, like on, they had took the skewers off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, steak. But the, <laughs> the weird thing that I got most excited about was just fresh watermelon because Ooh. you don't realise how much you miss simple things yeah, until yeah, you yeah. can't have them. Yep. Because um, there probably wasn't a lot of fruit and fresh fruit. Uh, no, we general. get like um, apples and pears, but um, just this beautiful, juicy watermelon. Yeah, that's good so shit. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm, just, I'm doing backflips if I say watermelon. Yeah, I'm not mean, in jail. Yeah, 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 I'm the same. And yeah. that's the thing. I don't like watermelon. So I'd be what? at the prison barbecue just being like, can you trade it for something? And then just getting beaten within an inch <laughs> of my life. <laughs> One, <laughs> another thing I missed a lot was fresh eggs because oh, yeah. you get just you said egg, um, powder. You get egg powder, right? But guys that have jobs as they're called sweepers, which are kind of like admin workers in prison, they get a carton of eggs every week, right? Nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the same guy that hooked me up with the sandwich press was like my little... Fairy godmother, <laughs> he. Um, I came back to my cell one day and it was just like a fresh egg laying on my pillow, like it had been laid, oh. like it had been laid by, a, you know, <laughs> yeah. the Long Bay chicken or something. <laughs> That's very sweet. And oh man, I just remember having that egg like on fresh bread. I cooked it up on, on the sandwich press, yep. 
and then having it on fresh bread just with a little bit of barbecue sauce and just I can't tell you how much like that was just so enjoyable mm. because I hadn't had it so long. Totally. Yeah. I was going to ask you before what was because you said you were at Puck Lee and then you were trying to get um you know like the work shift thing or whatever or the work what, what, what was it a called? work hold work hold yeah so what was your job uh, so there was a bunch of different jobs but i was working in packaging so essentially there's like a marketing company that works with the prison and they have like uh, clients that pay slave labor at the yeah, prison to that's horrific. Um, do all this stuff so you get paid i think it's something like 17 dollars 50 a week just to be in jail you get paid to be in prison right mm-hmm. um <laughs> What? <laughs> no. So the reason for that is because I told you that um, your loved ones can put money in mm. your account yeah. and you can use that to buy food groceries. Yeah. But imagine if you are a guy that doesn't have any loved ones putting money into your account and you mm-hmm. see these guys getting groceries all the time. It's the haves and the have-nots. Yep. Next thing you know, you start bashing and robbing people because you need some stuff. Okay. So they give everyone 17 bucks so that even the guys that don't have loved ones putting money into their account can buy something mm-hmm. to reduce that. So that's the reason why you get seventeen fifty. But then, if you work a job, instead of getting seventeen fifty, you can work. You can earn. I think I got like thirty three, thirty four dollars. Okay. Right? So you, and that's for uh, that's for a week. That's for working thirty hours. So you Fuck. make you make about a dollar. You're doing week. a full, nearly full time work. I thought it was bits and pieces, but six hours a day for five days a week, Fuck. and for like a dollar an hour. Bucks. Oh yeah. my god! I suppose I, I I don't know. I can't speak to it, but does it just take your mind off what you're where That's you are, sort of the, thing? The way they position it is you're getting the gift of working. So <laughs> the time the they time hard on time. that. <laughs> <laughs> that they are on that. Why don't we say this? <laughs> and I and I accepted that there was some like I enjoyed it to an extent, but I didn't want to do it full time. Like I wanted to yeah. negotiate some kind of part time yeah. yeah. prison work. Right? Want to go casual? <laughs> <laughs> where there's less leave, but the rates are better. <laughs> I work right? for myself, yeah. actually. Yeah. Can I dial in? Actually, yeah. I, pr- I prefer to take two weeks of annual leave right now, sir. <laughs> work for myself. And the other thing is, you're when you were just not working, you could go in and out of your cell during the day. So you could grab snacks. You know, you could have a cup of coffee whenever you wanted. And I had like nice Nescafe Blend Forty Three that I oh, well, bought at great expense on the buy up. And so you could you could come and go and get a pack of chips, whatever you wanted. But when you were working. You were there at the packaging factory all day, so you couldn't do that back and forth and grab whatever you wanted. Mm. And so, I found I had to break the rules in by in because I loved the coffee. That was my one addiction in jail was having these coffees. Yeah, I had to like get some plastic, tie it up, and hide it under my ball sack <laughs> um, in the morning. <laughs> right. Your large ball sack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now it's Blend 44. <laughs> <laughs> blend 4.4. 4. Because yeah. you get you get wanded with a um, metal detecting wand and patted down so that you're not like um, smuggling any contraband out. So I had to yeah. smuggle my coffee out, out of there in the, into the packaging. And so area. it's a it's it's a it's still in the prison or it's sort of it's still in the prison. But they just, you're not allowed to kind of take things back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to negotiate on behalf of the other inmates and say, hey, look, we, we'd enjoy doing this job a lot more if we were out able to take some of our um, grocery items to work. Yeah. And so he said, okay, what I'll do is every Monday I'll have a Tupperware container and you guys can put in what you want and I'll check it and take it over. So I negotiated that on behalf yeah. of all the inmates. Look at this. You're oh, unionising the inmates, guy. right? Yeah. And then I got moved to another prison like two days later. Oh, oh. that's why you were just, as you were starting mm. to go up the escalator. You were Shawshanking in your own way. That's mm. right. Mm. You were red. Prison. Yeah. But, then, yeah. but then I went to Long Bay and I got to work, walk the yard and train and um, play cards and I was like, this is better than working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you, um, did you have any, was there any particular inmates that sort of like were characters or anyone that, you know, don't have to say their name or anything like that, <laughs> but what they're in for or what they did it. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. Was there any real characters you got along with there? There were so many that I got along with. Uh, of the guys that I was closest with, um, I, I, so I got bail and I know about five other guys that have since gotten out. Mm. And of those guys, one hung himself Oof. Oh, uh, and three of them are back in jail already. Jeez. Oh. So... It's, so there's you know, one other guy that's still out. One other guy about. that's still out, but he hasn't been sentenced yet, so he might go back himself. So I just really opened my eyes to the fact that um, 
when I walked around the yard, most of the guys were in there for their second, third, fourth time. Mm. You know, it seems that once you start going to jail, you, mm. you go back again and yep. again and again. And so that really made me think, I, I don't want that to be my life. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure. And I I, like if I've got pretty supportive parents and if you come out and you don't have that and then I feel like it's like you don't have the support network. Easy it's to pretty easy to slip yeah. back there. Because if you get out of prison and all the guys that you identified with the, are all ex-inmates, right? then it's going to be more likely that you're just going to socialise with guys that have been to prison and then we're more likely to um, do dumb things with them yeah. and end up back in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was very fortunate that I had a, a big network of family and friends that got around me and then I started doing comedy and so many people in the comedy scene have been so um, mm. kind of welcoming welcoming and supportive of me that it's um, – Really bigger, helped change my life. Even bigger degenerates in the comedy scene. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, like a similar <laughs> fucking. They just group do all their crime under the shroud of Instagram <laughs> DMs mostly. <laughs> well, that's why they're being nice to me. They think I've still got drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask you a question about getting out because I was, uh, I mean, th- I was just watching Ocean's Eleven yesterday and it just sparked a thing in my mind. But like in. Like in prison movies, uh, like what the logistics of getting out of prison, because usually in every prison movie, it's like a guy gets out, he's put in the suit he got arrested in, he's got like his little effects, and then usually there's some guy like leaning on a convertible, smoking a cigarette, being like, <laughs> we've got another job to do. Like yeah. what's what's the logistics of getting out of prison? Because like you'd assume that like a lot of people don't have a fucking penny to spend or don't have a loved one, and then they're just be like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go to the pub and fucking commit another crime yeah. to like – that's right. Well, a lot of guys do. That. I, I, I remember walking around the yard and asking guys, like, where's the first place you go uh, when you get out? And I thought it'd be like, I, I was thinking Macca's. Yeah. yeah. It turns out the correct answer is brothel. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah right. Yeah, that makes um, sense. It's a lot easier getting into prison than out, like, because yeah. uh, I just was on a truck and then they open a door and it's like, Here you are. What's, your, what's your min number? What's your prison ID? You piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 Fuck it, screws. But when you get out, yeah, they give you – What's your min number? What's your penis size? (laughs) Come on. (laughs) You know that already. (laughs) That's your pin number. (laughs) (laughs) So they give you clothes and it was so weird after wearing just green for so long to have my old clothes back. Yeah. And then you put them you put them on and then they came out of a door to like this holding cell where there were inmates in there and there's a couple of guys that I kind of knew and they smiled and said something along the lines of at least someone's getting out. Yeah. yeah. So there right. was that. I had that kind of feeling of camaraderie, mm. and then I had to go through like a winding series of passageways, and this um, prison guard that was escorting me had to put in pins for certain keys, and um, I had to fingerprint and do an eye scan on various things, and then um, I got let out. Then we had to get in a car and drive down a driveway to like the public parking. So it was quite a process to get out, mm. Mm. and then um, and the whole time you're like. You're, you're happy? You, uh, is it surreal? Are you like, are you worried that they're going to come down and like, they've changed their mind or some shit? Like, are you. Yeah, have we fucked the people? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very surreal because if you are a sentence inmate, then you'd be counting down the days to when you're getting released. But I was in remand. I had had my bail refused when I originally got arrested. And so we were back asking again in the regular court for permission for, for me to get bail. And um, the reasons for us asking in regular court rather than having to go to the Supreme Court because I'd had it refused were that I'd had a change of circumstances. One of those reasons was that I had a different lawyer. The second one was that for a period... If I drew as your lawyer. <laughs> 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 they... Uh, they had changed lawyer and they, for a temporary while there, they had taken the mushroom charge, which was my biggest charge off because they'd said that they were contaminated and that they were, um, oh, they, they tested improve. negative. Yeah. Oh. So I, I, I thought was, the judge had just been watching a lot of Joe Rogan podcasts. Like, hey, <laughs> I think these mushrooms are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, one day, I think that, that kind of help happened in my sentencing that I think the judge was like, there's, yeah. there's, he, we're in a we, DMT we, T-shirt. We argued, whilst it was a large commercial charge, it was for magic mushrooms. Yeah. Like no one's doing home invasions and yeah. beating, beating <laughs> yeah, their wives exactly. on magic mushrooms. No, yeah. Exactly. Right? But um, yes, yeah, so the mushroom charge, my biggest charge was temporarily taken off and I had a new lawyer. So we used that as part of the, the argument and the, the judge accepted that. So I got granted, um, I got granted bail and 
that all happened so suddenly and I'd gotten so used to not getting my hopes up about anything because mm. I'd, I I had time and time again had shit things happening in jail and it just crushed my soul that I just got used to um, not like hoping for anything. Just assuming mm. you're going to be in there hope, for a while. Um, hope for the best, expect the worst was yeah, the kind yeah, of mentality yeah, yeah. that you had to get to have to protect yourself. Totally. So when it happened, I just... I couldn't believe it. And it was so hard in the yard with all these guys are going to be in prison, some of them for 20 years, mm. yes. to just um, manage my excitement. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. want to like um, – Go up there and be like, ah, I'm you know, getting out, motherfuckers. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to gloat in their Each, face. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to gloat in their face because – Well, that's you when you go through to state final at Raw. You know, hey, better <laughs> luck next time. But, <laughs> and, you know, I don't like it either. But, uh, <laughs> Spoken, yeah, spoken yes. like a guy that went to national. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the damn judges. Yeah. <laughs> judges are on some of my stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, did yeah, you get I, to gift your Breville to anyone? Were you like, this is now yours, buddy? I gave it. I, I was able to gift it to my cellmate with permission from the guy who loaned it to me. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Inside a pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Children three people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Man, that is, yeah. And so how long between getting told... You're getting out on bail and, you know, clink the doors, shut behind you and you're out. Like, is it? Uh, it was probably about four or five hours. Oh, oh shit. shit. It's, it's t- yeah. So, so it's barely sunk in at all. Mm. You don't even get to sleep on it. Holy moly. No, I went and like divvied up my grocery buy up to like my friends in there. Um, so chocolates, noodles, I try to spread it out evenly. You can keep the the, co- the coffee. Actually, I know where that's been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I get about your gooch coffee? <laughs> <laughs> that's the good stuff. <laughs> it's fermented. <laughs> uh, so I divvied that up, and then I went out to the yard for lunch, and then I got called when we were out there. So it must have been yeah, about about one <clears throat> thirty. Do you remember your last meal? Um, no, I don't. I, I think I've got it written in my food reviews, but I think I was so, I didn't give a shit what it was. I was yeah. too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> to be like two stars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember my first meal out of jail, we went straight to Macca's. And, oh, fuck oh, yeah. What'd you get? Yeah, yeah what, double quarter pounder, please tell me. I think I got a Big Mac, a double quarter pounder, and a yes. chicken burger. Oh, so, uh, mate. The three, the three That kings. is good <laughs> shit. And then they we call that the, the Alex Drew and Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> and then a double QP. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Then we went to the brothel after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum had to sit in the waiting room. The whole <laughs> she works there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, I suppose we, we kind of don't have a version of our normal... We, I mean, we I definitely mean, we can. We can. We can. Well, like, so right. normally we ask someone. Like, well, should we just? Is there any other? Yeah, we normally ask for questions. Is there any other stories or anything you wanted to touch on before, just so we don't miss anything? Well, I mean, one the most interesting that happened to me in jail was that. So I was when I finished in quarantine at Parkley, I got put into this prison wing called Five C. And that was just like absolute chaos. Like it was a melting pot of like different blokes and different charges and different cultures. And there was all, you could feel tension like mm. all the time. And there wasn't enough working phones and there was just too many guys in the prison wing. And it was just, it just felt like it was just bubbling away that it was always going to explode. And I um, got told of this gold pod, which was like a privileged um, prison wing that you could get to, um, and I didn't. I thought it, you got it, got to it if you asked for a job and those kind of things. But it turned out you just had to ask the right prison guards. So I just said, "Can I go to another um, to five D?" And this uh, lady screw just said to me, um, "Have you had any like jail charges? Have you done anything wrong here?" I said, "No." So the next day I got moved to five D, which had like better gym equipment, better toaster, more phones, less guys looking for trouble. So it was just like so much better. And then two days later, there was a prison riot that started in 5C, which was Fuck exactly oh, wow. where Holy I had just... So we, we were in the yard training, and then suddenly we heard someone say, there's someone on the roof. Oh, and then one root guy on the roof turned into like three and then we saw prison guard prison guards like full in full squad outfit racing down and we're like shit, something's going down and like to be an inmate, like spectating this stuff felt really exciting. Yeah. It was just like, you know, go, go. Like, lads, 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 lads. <laughs> 5C, 5C. <laughs> Next thing you know, there was like seven or eight dudes on the roof. And what had happened is um because 
during COVID, they'd cancelled visits. They um, were finding it harder and harder for guys to get like drugs into the prison. Mm. So guys had been throwing between prison wings, like over the fences, drugs, and sometimes they got stuck on the roof. So it turned out there was like a treasure trove of <laughs> drugs on the roof. <laughs> oh, man. So it's just like a suburban child's house where you go up there yeah, and there's soccer frisbee. balls <laughs> and frisbees. Right? So they just charged a guard, climbed this like metal grill up to a skylight, smashed through that. One guy climbed up there and then they got bed sheets and just like helped each other up till there was like eight or ten dudes on the roof. Right. Then they spelled out BLM, Black Lives Matter on the roof just to make it look like it was like a political statement. Oh, right. Right. Clever, clever boys. Next thing you know, they set fires off and it, there was this black smoke and we all got uh, locked away back in our cells. And from my cell, I could see this black smoke and I was thinking – I hope that doesn't get closer because <laughs> I'm locked in a cell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is not very far. And then, so. and then we chanted on uh, Channel 9 and 7 and it's just like live from Parkley Prison. And Fuck. it's like all these guys that I had just been in a prison wing oh, with shit. like giving their finger at the, t- at the television crews. Oh, Holy shit. And, I was and you like, were like a day or two before you ever been there. Yep. Holy and, shit. And so that was the only night. Normally we got dinner served at like 3 o'clock. This was the only time we had dinner at a reasonable time because of the riot. We had dinner at like 6 p.m. So yeah. I thought Jeez. they should have had a riot every day. <laughs> 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 the fucking early bird special. Every day. We're it was staying wild. up late tonight, boys. Wow, man. That is insane. Yeah. And all those guys, I felt sorry. Even the guys that weren't involved got locked away in their cells for like a week or 10 days like yeah. in these tiny cells. So I felt sorry for for yeah, them. but uh, yeah, that was wild. I mean, this wow. has been an insane episode, and you've told some great stories. Fucking three p.m. dinner time is the one that's got really <laughs> true. Yeah, it's really true. rattled me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because the inmates work in the kitchen, right? So they have to get locked up themselves. The uh, inmate workers. So everyone, everyone's locked back in there. Are you tummy rumbling by nine p.m.? That's why it's so good to have. Uh, you buy up grocery food, yeah, okay. right, you so the, that you can cook a cup, cup of noodles you're doing or, a little supper or, or something with like a sandwich press. Fuck. So it makes such a difference because you're right, particularly if you're training like all day. Yeah, dude. Then mm. you're just, you're just right. starving. Holy shit. Um, um, we should, yeah, we should maybe ask the last well, questions. Yeah. Is, is this your, is is this your 100th episode? No. Nah, it'll, it'll be, be just be after. Very soon. It'll be very soon after, yeah. We've got a couple in the bank. Yeah, um, we've got. We normally yeah. ask some questions about where people are from. About like, give us your, uh, you know, what to do morning, noon, and lunch and dinner. But maybe we just say, you know, what what would you recommend doing if you get sent to prison? Yeah, yeah. What yeah, about that? yeah. Like, how do you stay sane in there? Yeah, what's your tips for someone if uh, you know someone, you know, Jay Wright or a Jack W that we know <laughs> that uh, <laughs> might or a Jack Wright <laughs> <laughs> might get sent, and you know how to keep sane and yeah. All that sort of stuff. I think one one thing that I definitely noticed, even though I didn't get picked on myself, was if guys try to have a go at you, people, everyone's watching all the time. So you, guys that stick up for themselves get respect, mm-hmm. right? right? So um, even if they're going to get beaten up a bit. Um, so it's like the cliche of punch the biggest guy in jail sort well, of thing. Well, it's like not don't go looking for a fight, but if a fight comes to you, don't just um, back down because otherwise I'd be fucked fuck then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd cur- curl up on the ground at the first sign of danger. The yeah. thing is, even if you start throwing punches, right, then they'll they'll go. Oh well, he, at least he's got a little bit of fight in him. You'll right. get some more respect, okay. respect because I saw this guy getting beat up, um, punched in the head a few times and robbed, and I wanted to go and stick up for him. And my cellmate who had done a lot of jail said to me. Um, don't back him up unless he backs himself up. You know, like yeah. you can't go fighting his fights for him. But right. if he if he has the guts to do it, then you soon you so they would soon find that they have more friends than they thought they did. Right. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I Interesting. like that. Okay. Yeah. But it makes sense though, because otherwise it would have been just me trying to be some hero, um, defending yeah. defending this guy, getting yourself into trouble for no reason, and yeah. then I would have got you know targeted. Damn. Last okay. question we can't really do, but no. I'll do it anyway because it's funny. <laughs> 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 Ammo, your comedy career has gone to the highest heights. You're a raw national finalist and more. You're a headline every fifth that wear. When all is said and done, would you go back to prison to settle down? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm a raw state finalist, not national finalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is in your wildest this dreams. The, yeah. Oh, my wildest this dreams. Is next year and beyond. 
Are, are you out for good? Is there a chance <laughs> you're you going back? down in prison? <laughs> that egg powder? Or so I'm, I'm, I've been sentenced to an intensive corrections order, which is what I'm on now. And the mm-hmm. two rules are I have to do 200 hours community service and I'm not allowed to do any more crime for two and a half years. <laughs> oh, right? Damn. Which is... That's... That's the real Better hassle. erase this. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. So, that's, um, um, so but no, I couldn't do it to my mother. I, yeah. I, I, I made a promise enough. to her. Oh, that's very sweet. That's man. very sweet. Yeah, she'll that. have to go in with you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had thought, like, if I was, when I got sentenced, I thought there was a chance I could go back. And I thought, all right, well, um, that would be good. I can get some more material. But now, if I was to commit another crime and go back, then I think I'd, I'd, I'd lose all the goodwill that I'm generating. Totally. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it would Probably look like a bit of a stitch. Just like, <laughs> not, not worth it for me. Yeah, <laughs> just looking at the notebook being like, maybe I should go back to dating's weird. Instead <laughs> <laughs> of second yeah. stint in jail. <laughs> Uber drivers, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Oh, man, that was man, such a fucking yeah, crazy far, yeah. chat. Hammer, do you have anything you want to plug? Do you have any shows coming up or... I am doing a split bill with Artie Gallagher as part of the Sydney Comedy Fringe. Hell yeah. yeah. It's called, beautiful. Um, it has an appropriate name for a guy that was in prison for drugs. It's called Let's Get a Bag yep. <laughs> of Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like so that. that'll be on the 29th of September and the 1st and 2nd of October. Oh, great. And oh, you that's can so funny. probably buy tickets to that at fringecomedy.com.au because this will come out well before the 29th yes. of September. Absolutely. And if you see Hamo doing any uh, yeah. gigs, go check him out. Do you have any socials that you want people to follow because you got your TikTok? And yep. So Ham Diggity on Instagram, which is H-A-M-D-I-G-I-T-Y. And Andrew.hamo on TikTok, which is where I post all my food reviews and stand up clips. Oh, awesome. yeah. Beautiful. Chuck him a follow. Thanks and so much for coming by. As always, Thanks for us, me, boys. try and review us on uh, Apple Podcasts and five Spotify. Star review. Yeah, Come on. five stars. We've got a YouTube channel where we put the full video up every Tuesday and get in touch with us on all social medias. We love hearing your stories and all. Come see my prison comedy tour I'm organizing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Disbarred <laughs> with Andrew Bensley. <laughs> but apart from that, what a fun episode. We'll Thanks see you so next much, week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.